Bonjour. I always wanted to have a satellite clock, and I decided to make one. This is an image of what I expected to do, but the project changed a little bit. So let me show you what I did. First, I went to Eagle to create the electronic circuit. So to describe it rapidly, as you can see here, I use an Arduino. I have up here a step-down regulator so I can input any power over, let's say, 5.5 volts. This corresponds to the pinout for the, the external GPS. This will be a small connector that I will install on the board for the display. And I have a push button so I can change the DST when I need it. So this is the electronic part. Let's go into design in Fusion 360 now. This was the initial design that I wanted to create. As you can see here, I used a protoboard because I expected to solder everything on the protoboard. The uh, GPS was on the back with the antenna, the power connector was behind, and I had the two screens in the front with the push button for the DST in front of the, of the design. This design here was made to print on that face but it's flat and I wanted to have specific designs in front of it something nicer than a flat design so I designed this face with a little bit of information such as a date, the time and this part here is the number of satellites that are uh, detected and the button for the DST is right here and the back this is the full design that I expected to do to make a long story short, after soldering all the components on the protoboard and testing everything, I noticed that there was a short and I, I blew up the microcontroller. So this design is bad. I had to redo it. So I decided to go back in Eagle to create a circuit board that I can cut with my CNC. So here we are with the same circuit as before. Let's check the board that I created. I decided to place the step-down regulator right near the power connector, the Arduino in that direction. Even though the USB cable is on the left and may be difficult to access, still I decided to put it in that direction because I wanted to have the smallest path possible to cut on the CNC. On the top here we have the GPS module that will be connected here and we're gonna have the connector for the displays right here. So let's try to cut this on my CNC. Okay, I'm not going to lie, this first try will be a failure. In fact, as you can see here, the first board was not cut correctly. If I flip it over, as you can see, the alignment was absolutely wrong. So I had to do another try. And this try was also wrong. As you can see here, it seems to be correct, but if I flip it, it's a little bit off, just a little bit, so I have to throw it away and restart a third time. This time though, it worked perfectly. So as you can see here, I milled the surface of the board on one side, flip it over and milled the other side successfully, you're gonna see that. Uh, I used flat cam to prepare the, the toolpath for the circuit board and I use BCNC to drive the Shapeoko, the CNC. Here we can see the work of the machine, a little bit speed up, it's working very well, and the nozzle is the air pushing on the drill bit. This is the real speed, just to give you an idea of the time it took to cut all the boards. Let's check an extreme close-up, just to show you the precision of the machine. It takes time, but it's very precise. By the way, just to show you, the air comes from behind the desk. As you can see here, I 3D printed an adapter on the top of my vacuum cleaner, where if I unscrew or screw it, I can control the volume of air going through the tube and to the nozzle. This is perfect to clean the bit as, as it cut the circuit. I'm so happy that it worked this time. Look the perfection. 
the holes are perfectly aligned. They didn't go through totally, but I, you can see it. Look here. It's perfectly aligned with the pads. Good. It's now time to solder the components and to do the final assembly. After a few hours, this is the final result. As you can see, the board fits perfectly inside the casing. I'll be able to fold the cables inside the casing. The next part is to install the finishing touch. By the way, if you want to find more information about the components I use for that project, you're going to find everything you need in the description of the video. This concludes the video for today, so I hope you like what you saw. Please subscribe, share and give me a thumbs up so I can do more videos like this one in the future. Talking about the future, I'm sure you noticed that the movie Back to the Future inspired this design. Okay, it's enough for today. See you next time. Bye!